uh, ISRO NRC today. So we have uh, eminent scientists, uh, Ms. Manju Sharma and Ms. Uh, Usha Sundari, who will be uh, talking to us and uh, informing us about the different projects at uh, NRC. So we will be hearing from them today about uh, Puniti and uh, uh, NISA projects. So we are looking forward to it. So I would first like to welcome Ms. Manju Sharma here. Thank you. Uh, so a very good morning to today's second day of this conference. And uh, I heard yesterday uh, a very informative tutorial sessions have happened. Uh, and I thank uh, and uh, to the organizers to give uh, who has given me this opportunity to speak uh, in today's session. Uh, so I'll be taking you through uh, the Earth observation data that ISRO has been collecting over the years and how we have been utilizing them for, for different projects and also uh, what are the data access mechanisms and um, uh, how uh, uh, is the current uh, data disseminations which is happening through our Bunidi portal. Uh, so, uh, it has been, has been acquiring data from, from a numerous number of satellites and we, are, we, we have variety of satellites of different resolutions, different spectral wavelengths and we get volumes of data from from different ground stations and as per the the data bandwidth of different uh, satellites and we give uh, uh, we, we have veracity of data that means we have data of very high accuracy and uh, also a lot of consistency there and the velocity at which we get it depends on for our bandwidth and we get data almost within one hour and up to three to four hours of of from different satellites and the products are available to, to different users. And we have satellites of different resolutions from 0.28 meters to about 1000 meters. We have swaths from 10 kilometers to 1 to 1400 kilometers. And we have variety of products of georeference, geo kit, surface reflectance, orthorective and value added thematic products. So this is the kind of variety uh, of uh, products which ISRO is disseminating. Uh, uh, through uh, through our portal called uh, Bhunidhi. Uh, uh, so the the we we are into this uh, business of Earth remote sensing uh, data products from past thirty years, thirty plus years, and uh, we have under the medium resolution uh, satellites we have IRS one A from which was launched in nineteen eighty eight, eighty nine, and henceforth, and we have resource set series. Then also the radar sat series in the microwave spectrum. Then coarse resolution. Under coarse resolution, we have the ocean sat series, the scatterometers, and also from insat, which is at geo uh, 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 orbits. Then we have the high under the high resolution category, we have the Cato sat series one, two, two S, and Cato three. And for the very high resolution, we have Cato two S span that is submitter data and C2, C3 pan. And we also have contributing uh, contributing uh, uh, missions uh, for our uh, in, in, uh, for data dissemination from NOVASAR, Landsat 8, Night Sentinel, uh, Equaterra, JPS, NPP, SOMI, and NOVA. So, uh, and all these satellites we have been acquiring uh, from uh, uh, from different ground stations and we have been acquiring from through different ground stations. Okay, so we have ground stations at Shadnagar and we have ground stations at the North Pole uh, uh, we, uh, uh, through agreements at uh, through uh, from Svalbard and also we have ground stations at the South Pole which is owned by ISRO that is Antarctica ground station. And we get data from all these ground stations. The 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 concept of uh, the ground stations is something you can do. The concept of uh, having ground stations at the pole is we get more visibility about seven to seven to eight seven to eight uh, 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 orbits. Thereby we have we have uh, we will we are able to acquire 
data, uh, more data, more dumping capacity is there. Uh, and hence, uh, um, all the playback uh, imaging, everything gets dumped at our, uh, at our um, polar ground stations. So in this way, we are able to collect a lot of data through our uh, polar ground stations. So this is our Antarctica ground station we have at uh, Maitri. So the different access points that we are providing through uh, the portal are through HTTPS, which is through a GUI. You, you have the, uh, the select, uh, select, uh, selecting search criteria is there after selection and the data downloads or ordering happens. So that uh, one of the access point is through HTTPS. Another access point for data is through FTP, where delay downloads kind of uh, products and which are of bulk in nature or even for scatterometer, we put a few of the data sets in FTP mode. And we are upcoming, we are coming for, uh, in the next few months with uh, APIs where you can access data through API and also we are moving to cloud so that we, we can scale up the user requirements and also the data is available in near real time through our cloud services. So these are the different four access uh, data access points that uh, we are uh, uh, providing. I will take you through a few of, a few of the captures that our capability showcasing our from E06, we are get, we have we get uh, OC two days uh, in thirteen bands. Uh, so the globe and also at uh, three sixty meters for Indian region. And uh, we have come out with many new products on uh, where. We are generating a full full India based full globe global based products. Where uh, now this is uh, an example of uh, uh, minimum cloud uh, composite from Avis thirty day, fifteen day, and also cycle wise, where uh, we uh, the users can do uh, time series analysis and see the trends of various uh, 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 vegetations and forest cover and things like this. So these are the products which are. Uh, are being uh, derived from the earth, uh, the ISO uh, sensors. Then uh, uh, we are also um, uh, generating NDVIs from LAC and, and that is full India and uh, uh, on, a, on a fortnightly basis, uh, fortnightly basis, they are 360 meters, which, uh, uh, which allows the uh, users to see the time, the trends and the time series analysis. So this, this is from uh, August um, or September, a uh, few of the products. And there are many other geophysical products which are generated through our different sensors. We have NDVI vegetation fraction and, uh, and uh, uh, the Sigma not enhanced Sigma not products and surface reflectance products. So uh, these are a few of the thematic products through our sensors. Now, uh, these sensors have been very regularly and on uh, 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 have been fueling our national projects and uh, for different uh, applications for agriculture, E04, MRS, AFS, LIST3, LIST4, C2S data is being used um, and uh, uh, for land use, land, land cover and uh, 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 land cover where uh, there are many solutions which have which have coming up like digital agriculture solutions where uh, crop surveillance weather extreme and horticulture in uh, insurance solutions are being given and uh, also a crop health factor index is being generated on a national level and thereby uh, thereby helping the national level policy makers and crop mapping, different maps are getting generated from RISAT1 MRS data uh, for rice crop as well as kharif uh, crop uh, uh, during the season. Uh, now coming to the forestry and disasters, uh, our data of uh, AVIS, C2S uh, uh, they are being used for forest mapping as also for disasters, fire, uh, forest fires. Uh, 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 to to uh, uh, do a rapid uh, affected area estimation and also in near real time agri fire alerts are being given from Modis GPSS one and uh, 
Swami and PP. So these are the kind of different applications which are being uh, uh, generated from the data. And uh, from E01, uh, from E04, uh, the polarimetric uh, decomposed products are also are being used to assess the floods and uh, um, the flood products are now getting generated in, an, in automation, thereby reducing the time for flood map generation uh, from E04. Uh, then our data has also been used during disasters. For most recently, the, skip, the Sikkim uh, uh, glacier lake outburst, and uh, um, uh, all monitoring was done through our E04, C2S, MRS, and FRS different modes. So our satellites have been helping in all the disaster, uh, uh, glacier disaster monitoring and assessment. We also have uh, data uh, in the uh, high resolution. Uh, 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 category. So thereby, these uh, uh, these sensors are being used for the projects of urban water body information system, where the the uh, all the uh, the urban water bodies, which are of uh, of very uh, uh, high resolution scale, are being mapped and on a national level basis. Also, we, uh, also, this high resolution data of C2S is being used for uh, urban geospatial database generation uh, for, uh, for, uh, so that many of the GIS applications are, uh, uh, is, uh, are evolving out of this. So uh, the, it is being used for Amrit project where one is to 4,000 maps uh, are uh, getting generated from our C2S data. So this is all uh, uh, the potential of uh, the data that we are having under all the different categories. So uh, this is, these are the solar farms which are, which are captured by our C2S sensors and also the wind farm mills are there. These are the wind farm mills which are captured, thereby now using our AIML techniques they have been captured and mapped and also uh, identified and uh, used for further decision making of where where further solar farms can be uh, can be uh, uh, set up and so helping to for the um, uh, energy sector uh, so the different users that we have been serving the different national geospatial projects so at a national level uh, so these are all the different national, the uh, NNRMS, uh, NNR, uh, the National Resource uh, Census, and uh, AIBP, and all these are the government flagship projects which are being uh, served through the data that is being disseminated through Bhunidhi portal. Uh, and we are not only for the different projects; we are also uh, fueling few of the websites that are there. Bhuvan takes a lot of data. Then also MOSDEC we give so that they they further uh, generate the thematic products and uh, showcase more of analytics in their uh, in their websites. Vedas is there and our data goes into the CO Civic uh, catalog where it is made the catalog is made global for for other users and Earth Explorer also uses the catalog that is there from us and also our data goes into the Copernicus websites. Now I will take you through all this. All this was the kind of data that we have, and the kind of applications that are 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 there, which are which are using the data. So now, how do we explore this treasure of Earth observation data that we are having at NRC through our Bhunidhi portal? So uh, the first, I would like to I'll take you through. I'll take you through the uh, the browser. So basically, in our portal, we have uh, currently four, uh, five applications. One is the browse and order, where we can do the browsing and ordering. Then we have the planner, where we can place future requests for uh, one of the satellite, and also a visualization application, where uh, the near re uh, real time uh, data can be seen for uh, for uh, uh, at native resolution. Then a lot of documentation is there in Bhunidhi resources and Upkara gives, gives the uh, real-time view of where our satellites are there currently in orbit. So 
So first, uh, it is a browse and order. Usually the questions that come in our mind are like, from which date the sensor data is available? Or which period our data is available? How much data, What which is the period for which data is there in our archive? Or what is the coverage that is available? Or which area is covered in this particular date range? Or what are the spatial resolutions? Which sensor is priced, which is free and open? So all this is shown by, by this uh, uh, archives, uh, this particular thing where you can select the date range and the sensor and the satellite sensors are available. So selecting them will, will show you the uh, will show you what is the coverage. Uh, and uh, uh, so questions like whether in January Bangalore was covered or today's data, whether it is available or not, the catalog. So these are the kind of questions which get answered by by choosing this archives and choosing the date range uh, in this. So uh, just for your this thing, this is a kind of archive we have covered India many more than uh, uh, through our resource set series, uh, ABIS, list three and list four. And uh, also not only India, but the whole globe also. And uh, uh, this is the kind of coverage we have for list three and ABIS from ResourceSat 2 and 2A also. Similarly for RASAT 1A MRS, uh, uh, we, uh, we have more coverage of India systematically, but uh, GLOBE is covered uh, on this, based on the spare capacity. Then we have Sentinel data, which we have an MOU with, uh, uh, with uh, Copernicus, where we are taking Sentinel 2 and 2A data and disseminating through this so that data comes in uh, near real time and we have we are acquiring landsat 8 and 9 at our ground station and uh, uh, data is available uh, in near real time and similarly nova novasar also we acquire data at our ground station and make the products available so these are the kind of coverages that we have under different sensors so which can be seen through that archive module now coming to the explore part so when we say explore is basically we have to we have to search for the data that uh, that we are specific about or uh, the, what we require. So uh, like the, the different search mechanisms and uh, uh, so or uh, the questions maybe whether I can see the browse chips or not. So there are basically four steps: one, two, three are mandatory, and the filters are optional. So these are the three. So a, we, a user has to um, necessarily give area of interest, date range, and whether it is open, priced, or the so filters are optional. But however, filters help in zero, zeroing down to the requirement where the user can take the data of, of their uh, requirement. So uh, now, uh, see, uh, this is the different uh, AOI options are there. So the questions that can be answered is whether I can search based on the name or based on the lat long or based on the shape file or whether I can upload the shape file or whether Survey of India map sheet says also. All these are available under this. Other than this, we have the map options where you can with point, with polygon, that also can be seen. So with polygon and these options are also available. This is to, to specify the area of interest. Then coming to uh, the date range. So when I, whether can I select any date range or uh, uh, so here uh, the default uh, by default what, what is shown if no date range is given one month from the current date is shown. Otherwise the date range uh, maximum can be of five years. So this is the kind of constraints we have put, but you can always move beyond five years. We have to change the uh, the 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 start date and end date. And uh, now for the open data, three months, uh, three months, or uh, will be will be shown by default. And older data can be, will be uh, uh, can be made available with a delay. So uh, so, uh, so if your date range, whatever is put. Uh, uh, data is not available, it will not allow you to select any of the data set that is available. Uh, so now the browsing, the browsing is free and there is no login required. Uh, uh, so all the filters, searching, everything can be done. 
Uh, however, if you have, if we have, if anybody wants to download or order, login as well as registration, both are required. So, um, uh, so the, these are the kind of questions which which can be seen through this uh, uh, searches. That is whether data is available under o the, these are the different filters. So, whether data is available under open category or based on the resolution, whether thirty meters data is available or ten meters data or whether uh, uh, any data of microwave is there or optical is there, or based on the satellites, sensor modes and processing products and processing levels. So whether the data, uh, some uh, uh, if I want some data for some agriculture applications or for, for forestry, which are the kind of sensors which support these kind of applications. So these are the different filters which are there, which helps, which aid users. So, uh, uh, like uh, these are the filters under open and uh, priced category that is open data or price data. Uh, then uh, we have uh, the resolution based uh, searches. Uh, then uh, we have the based on the imaging spectrum, microwave, non imaging, and optical. Or uh, then uh, based on the satellite, the satellite name it gives. Uh, then also based on the sensor type, what are the different sen sensor types? or different products, that is, uh, it could be DEM level one, level two, or thematic products, or uh, then based on the things. So these are the different filters which which helps, and maximum of about 10 or 11 products are, uh, uh, filters can be used. So uh, the, uh, now if a user is uh, knowledgeable or very specific, they can use the filters, otherwise the minimum filters that are uh, that is under that is understood can be used. So uh, uh, now uh, the all after after uh, selecting uh, selecting the uh, the different filters and the AOI and the date range. Uh, now the data can be either in the uh, open data under direct download or it can be under on order. In case uh, it is not available as direct download, it will be it will be processed and. Uh, made available with a delay or that particular uh, kind of search that we have done it uh, uh, as per the policy the high resolution for uh, um, government users is this free however for private users it is priced so which category of uh, data uh, we want that can be selected over here so uh, this is so the registration is required for uh, bunidi for downloading and ordering. However, browsing is no registration or login is required. So then how do I become a registered user or can a person register multiple times? No, they, because they will be requiring their email ID as well as uh, the category. So certain verifications are done and you can, you should not uh, register multiple times. And a foreigner also can register anybody, but they will come under private or uh, foreign category. So here, uh, the user type plays an important role because based on that, based on the policy, whether it will be priced or free will be decided. And also the email ID should be under the uh, government domain category. It could be .gov.in or nic.in or any other uh, email uh, domains, which is identified by the National Informatics Center of under Ministry of Information and Communication. Uh, uh, so those will be used, but however, users uh, uh, giving email ID like Gmail, Yahoo will be rejected. So these are the kind of uh, 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 care that a user should do when they are doing the registration. Now this is, that was about, uh, uh, there's little more, but I have not gone into the finally ordering and the download part, but uh, focus more on the search part and this. So another application is the planner. So where uh, we can give a request for future dates, and right now, uh, this is available uh, for E04 for CRS, MRS, and FRS. Uh, so uh, uh, users can place requests for future. And uh, when it will get confirmed, usually it will get confirmed T minus one day only. But however, the request will be taken so based on that. So these are this is so what the user the user uh, has a different uh, uh, the the facility to choose the polarization and also the look direction and uh, so and the dates in which they want the future request 
and they can view the different uh, opportunities which are available for them where uh, they can uh, uh, select which which is the request they want and uh, this is possible only uh, after they are they are registered users at bhunidhi and uh, uh, and they have to be authorized by by our nrsc planning request authorization there will be another authorization other than the registration so uh, this is for e04 however for all the other um, satellites the requests are through email id <clears throat> so uh, now these are the uh, uh, the sensors which we are doing a systematic planning over india uh, and we cover india uh, abs in 5 days uh, uh, and these are, uh, as per the revisit list 3 in 23 days list 4 in this way but however if any request is required other than our Indian region, that can be given uh, under this planning. And C2S, uh, all the high resolution, uh, and NOVAS are uh, the, the, these for which requests have to be given. So all these requests, future tasking basically are, are uh, um, aiding uh, data reception and also processing and availability of data for disasters, for ground truth collection, monitoring different floods, polar studies, and uh, also for international ground stations and charter emergencies. So in this way, uh, the Bhunidhi planner uh, and the planning activity uh, is there at this thing. Now, another uh, application is our real-time visualization at native resolution, which helps, uh, which helps uh, 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 the users to see what is there in our shop. That is, uh, as soon as the data uh, is processed, it could, it could vary from about one and a half to two hours up to five to six hours also depending on our on the processing that happens in our processing system so the different options over here are the date range where you can explore the data within a particular date range we can make time lapses or also a elementary measurement is possible then cycle wise data can be seen and comparison slider, this is a very uh, useful tool where immediately we can see a comparison. And also multi-layer visualization is enabled uh, where we can uh, overlay one layer over the other, which helps user to do a uh, real-time uh, um, comparative analysis. So these are few of the examples of Vista where uh, we can see uh, today's data of resource set two as soon as it is processed. And this is a kind of coverage which can be seen at Vista. This is not downloadable, but however, we can see what is the uh, uh, um, coverage that is there from different satellites. And uh, another application in that was the animation one, which uh, for a point of interest, uh, it will help you across the dates to make an animation uh, and visualize that animation. So few of the a few of the uh, climatic or any other uh, uh, events that are there can be captured and it is a, a very handy tool to get a first uh, uh, kind of um, analysis and this is uh, the data of uh, the of wind vectors from our scatterometer 3 data which can be visualized at vista on a daily basis on a two day basis and uh, uh, the multi layer visualization helps uh, uh, the many of the thematic products which are there in our uh, portal which can be uh, visualized and this is chlorophyll data from our uh, global uh, um, GAC OCM3 data uh, which comes on uh, every two days and also the data is available for about uh, three months in our archive for uh, and which is used for ocean and climate studies. Now, these are the uh, current applications and we are moving forward uh, and we look forward for collaboration with, uh, with many other pe people where, uh, for Code Lab where we are making this platform where uh, the, all our online data, what is there can be, uh, is made available and uh, we can uh, come into uh, collaboration and make many of the Jupyter notebooks for different processings and also the on-demand uh, processing where once uh, processing is matured enough, uh, we can operationalize it or uh, the user can put their own uh, uh, algorithm and uh, it can be put in our platform 
so that the users can take uh, the results from that uh, data. However, this uh, is the users have to give the authors, which will go through certain security mechanisms. And uh, um, then uh, also we can all, we are also thinking if uh, uh, it is a very innovative and very um, um, some processing new techniques are there. We also plan that we can take it up and put in our, in our operational uh, processing framework also. And we are also putting at Bhunidhi uh, um, many of the tools that one is the SARPOL tool is available right now currently also and many other tools uh, are coming in future. So in this way, uh, we look forward for collaboration with, with uh, other industries, partners, and other things. Now, these are the kind of, uh, <clears throat> as per the space data policy, where five meters and above uh, are open and free. However, uh, so these are the satellites which come under that category and which can be, if it is there on our, online archive, it will be um, uh, delivered within one to 10 minutes. But if it is not uh, there, if it is there in our offline or in our uh, second tire, it may come with a delay. And uh, for our uh, data under five meters up to uh, 0.5 meters, it comes, uh, these are the series uh, data that is available and uh, which will be delivered uh, within 24 hours. This is for free for government entities, but however, it is priced for private. And submitter is uh, is with an authorization uh, from uh, uh, it. It can be given to the this. Now, the most uh, good part of it is uh, that five meters and data is now open and the beta version. So you can all log in into Bunidhi and you will get all this data free. So that's all from me. Uh, Thank you. And this is one of the image which one of our farmer near our Shadnagar, he has made uh, our India map in his field and which was captured by Katosat tree. So now I would uh, show a small demonstration of uh, the uh, our Bhunidhi portal. Just more and take. So uh, this is Vista, which uh, I was talking about. So we can see, uh, yeah, easier for it. So this is today's data, morning. Huh? This is yesterday's. Today's data, morning 6 a.m. It was acquired. So this is the... Uh, the automation and the processing, everything is built and the data is available on our website as per the acquisition. This is for vision. But this will be available as a catalog. And now since the data is, this is available for download also. So uh, then this is another one, which is a uh, comparison slider. So the recent floods that we had near Chennai, so if we want to uh, do a comparison across, see, suppose, yeah, so. So this is a first quick view of the kind of damage that has happened and for people to do further analysis. So this is kind of. So immediately, as soon as we get within one hour, it is available for the whole user community to see uh, the kind of uh, change that is there. It is very helpful to do to see where the change is. Further quantification can be done at there and after downloading the data, the detailed analysis. And then uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So this uh, small tool where online we can do the measurement of the area of damage or the area that is covered by by the or by that change so you can we can uh, overlay over the base map different thematic maps so this is the multi multi layer visualization that is possible 
So these are the tools that we have built online, which helps users to do the analysis. And also uh, and seeing, seeing the global change that is happening. Uh, yeah, so then the scatterometer shows normal. Yeah, so this is our scatterometer bin vector data. Okay, so these are the different tools. All of you, I request all of you to explore. We have got humongous data. And uh, it is all open for all innovations and uh, many new applications. Uh, and our utilization of our data and uh, make, uh, making this taking good decisions and good innovative applications. So, yeah. Thank you, Madam. Was really great presentation. Uh, with Pune the planner, is it possible to plan acquisition that is not within India too? Yes. Is there any other requirement for, for that? Uh, well, you, uh, but now, uh, for which satellite? It is for E04 only, even okay. for even others also. But you have to give a request, it will be done, no problem. Based, but it is only based on the feasibility of the capacity which is available, other than. Tamni, you want to add something? So based on that, we'll just work out the feasibility and uh, based on the feasibility, we'll just come back when we can acquire the data. Excuse me. Yeah. Ma'am, uh, whatever data is on the portal, is that uh, orthorectified? There are different levels of products. Okay. Uh, some are orthorectified. Uh, the terrain corrected products are there. Okay. Even, uh, 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 so, yes, for few of the sensors, they are orthorectified. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. And most of the time, like uh, whatever uh, application we think of, uh, and the, the data set that comes to in our mind is Sentinel one or Sentinel two because of resolution or something. And after that, that land set and uh, that mode is. So, like what NRSC is doing, two thirds arguments like mine. Like uh, I, I have not seen many papers on list three or list four or other Indian data sets. So like what NRC and ISRO is doing um, to just to touch everyone's mind and like I have uh, like I'm not a very good uh, expert in this but yeah I want your thoughts on this. Yeah. So uh, yes, what you're saying to some extent it is true. It is not that papers is one part of it, but all our data goes into our national projects and uh, the uh, it goes in an operational way. But yes, the for uh, for the student or the academic community what is the it is the ease of uh, getting the data since uh, these were free and uh, abbas was paid and uh, a little complex procedure was there so might be that was one of the reason but now it is made available so uh, we are hoping that now you will replace uh, sentinel and landsat with our sensors okay now one more question like most of the time i use uh, google earth engine as a cloud uh, and use all these data, Sentinel and Landsat. So like ISRO is planning to add something in Google Earth Engine or something it is planning to have its own cloud platform. So we, uh, we can have these kind of things and use our new data, like it's NRC data. Yes, yes. So that is what I'd mentioned in one of my slides. We are coming out maybe in next few months. We ISRO will come out with a, with a cloud platform where all our data is made online. And uh, the user and the user community can uh, use that data to Jupyter notebooks, and they can do. So we are Thank coming you. out with similar engine. Yeah. So are you thinking of combining with Google Earth Engine also? Or? It will not be combining. It will be a very slow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for a nice Thank talk. So uh, no, I have a question. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> the last question. Um, so. Uh, do you uh, do you plan to have some kind of a recommendation uh, system, a recommendation engine? Uh, say, if for a particular application, you know, 
uh, not a lot of people are aware of most of the which satellite data to use and things like that. That's what we okay. have. We have in over the search filters thematic. Okay. Okay. So that uh, you see, can your, choose. Which... Yeah. So it aids you which sensors are you are suitable for that particular application. Okay. It is not limited to that. Okay. But the popular ones are put over there. Okay. We can we can you know do uh, applications from a little uh, in other sensors too. Which, but a matured ones which are being used operationally, uh, one of the filters that is theme based filters helps okay. you to decide that. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you. Yeah, so now uh, we'll give a round of applause. Uh, I'd like to now invite uh, Ms. Uh, Usha Sundari to give the next talk. Yeah, actually, uh, myself is Usha uh, from National Remote Sensing Center, one of the lead center from the ISRO. Uh, which is responsible for uh, satellite data acquisition, data processing, and the dissemination and development of the technique for the different uh, remote sensing applications and the uh, capacity building. Uh, so uh, the topic I'm going to deliver today is the NSR, uh, it's overview data products and the data dissemination strategy from ISRO. Actually, as we are all know that uh, the recent science and technology is driving towards the monitoring and analyzing the total different applications of the earth sciences. So we know that remote sensing is plays very vital role in addressing all these imperatives of the earth sciences. So specifically the space bone uh, SAR sensors uh, like uh, remote uh, specific to the uh, remote sensing of the using the active remote sensing that is synthetic aperture radar, which gives the more important and vital potential applications in the field of uh, studying the earth dynamics. We know that there are different uh, remote sensing techniques and we have a different sensors which are working in our uh, electromagnetic spectrum with the different frequencies like an optical and the microwave. Uh, we know that optical is mainly the source of uh, uh, illumination is the sun. It is depending on the sun. So we can't image the data during the night. And also the frequency at which operating is not penetrating to the cloud. So the images will be hampered with the cloud. So, but the images are very uh, like easily interpretation. But coming to the microwave uh, radar imaging, so the frequencies that is operating, it can penetrate through the clouds so that uh, they, uh, you can all weather uh, capacity it is having and also because it is having its own source of illumination because it is an active sensor. So it not depends upon the sun. So day and night it can image. So all weather capabilities it is having day and night you can image. So the nowadays that synthetic aperture radar remote sensing is very much popular uh, for uh, addressing so many of the uh, earth dynamic studies. But of course, the both the sensors are having the complementary information to the each others. So if you can see that image, uh, you that the leftmost image is from the optical data where you can see the uh, cloud and the left one is with the imaging with the SAR data. Uh, so you can see that the cloud is not there, but both the images are acquired at the uh, near the time, the same day. Next one, this is an electromagnetic spectrum where that synthetic aperture radar imaging will happen. Uh, right from P to the uh, K band. So each frequency is having its own capabilities. So every uh, space agency will decide the design of the sensor based upon their objective of their local needs or the global perspective. Suppose yesterday we had a very good session on the biomass sensor, which uses the P band because they have a more penetrating capability because of its longer wavelength. They have chosen the P band to find out the subset phase, the feature and all. Like L and S, they're also lower frequency, but of the longer wavelength, they have a different penetrating capabilities. So, so different applications of the land and the ocean, the they are designed. So next one coming to the C band. C band will give the high resolution as well as the good path. So it is a compromising band between the uh, P, L, S and the X band. Where X band is having its, uh, because of its higher frequency, it will give an, a very high resolution data mainly for the strategic applications or if you want to study the, like uh, sub, not the subsurface, but the peripheral uh, features like identifying the military targets or etc. or damage assessment, which gives the final resolution the people will go for the X band. So most if you see that C is the compromising band between these two, we have the uh, good applications it can do and based as well as the SWAT and the resolutions. So if you see in the all international uh, scenario, you, you will find the more C band sensors. 
So the right from ISRO's first indigenous uh, research ones are, which is uh, operating at the C band, uh, and next the follow-on mission of the research one year, and the Sentinel and DataSat and RCMD are are in the C band. So the Novasar, which is from the SSTL, uh, because it was launched from the ISRO, so th we they have provided the forty percent of their amazing share, so that uh, as Madam said in my previous presentation, so we have a lot of archive of the Indian Indian data. It is available at our the Bhuniri uh, where uh, users can use for their for their applications because it gives all the medium resolution SAR applications what we can derive from the Novasar. Then the L band, it is like from the Japan LOS and the SAOCOM and the X band from the TerraSRX. So, like this, these are the different uh, SAR sensors are available, which we can do for our study of the Earth dynamics. Other than the space bond, we have uh, uh, SAR missions of uh, like uh, in planetary missions also, like in Chandrayaan 1, that is a mini SAR operating at the X band, and as well as our own Chandrayaan 2 with the LNDS indigenously dowered our ISRO SAR sensor, which was flown in the uh, Chandrayaan 2, which is orbiting till now and it is providing the good pictures of the moon. So basically the SAR, uh, the main parameters, once that the signal touches the ground, the data which were is received by the target will be reflected back towards the sensor. So that we will call it as a radar backscatter, which is the main parameter which will be used for the, all the applications. The uh, this radar backscatter will mainly depends upon the uh, like sensor parameters, like uh, as I said earlier, the frequency and the polarization and the look angle. And whereas are the uh, like terrain parameters, like uh, geometry of the how that the target is uh, uh, towards, uh, it is in the sensor in what angle it is there, and it is surface roughness, whether the surface is rough or a smooth or a diffuse kind of uh, uh, characteristic it is having, and mainly the electrical properties of the target, that is the dielectric constant. So based on these parameters, the, reflect, the backscatter energy will be defined, and the application user will find out what is the target that is based on this picture. So uh, this is also depicting picture how that waves is going bad. If you see the L band, the mostly the signal is started touching the subsurface, that more penetration is there. The C band, it is a minimal up to uh, like trunk and all it is going, whereas an X band, it is just peripheral, it is going back from the canopy. This is the uh, like depicting the how that uh, terrain is uh, saying like a surface, whether it is a rough, smooth, how it will look. The second, the radar image, it is showing the uh, electrical properties of the dielectric constant. So where actually it was in somewhere in the some outside Indian uh, region. So where you can say that the drip irrigation system, where that wet, wetness is more so that you can have the bright uh, response over there. So we know that the uh, SAR is uh, catering to the different uh, applications. Uh, there's uh, like estimating the soil moisture in the field of uh, cryosphere, like snow and glacier studies, oceanography, and the ecosystem and the uh, like uh, solid earth where we can find out the uh, deformation, surface deformations. And of course, we can generate the digital, values, uh, digital elevation model. So then I'm just going to present about our the ISRO's legacy in multi-frequency and multi-polarization SAR data. So we have the first indigenous uh, ReSat-1, which is uh, having, a, which is a unique satellite, I can say, because it is having a unique capability of uh, acquiring the images in the compact polar meter. It is the first kind of in the global where the space bone is having the uh, compact polarimetry. And also the one more unique capability of uh, acquiring the data in the spot, that is spot mode, uh, charis, like uh, high resolution spot mode, which is having the one meter resolution with along track, we have a hundred kilometers. So sliding spotlight is a one more uh, unique uh, capability of the uh, Resort one. And as actually from the user demand, it will have the EOS 04, which is the follow on mission of the Resort one, which was launched in uh, February 2022. So uh, actually this data, because of that nowadays, as today also we had a very good lecture on the polarimetry. So it is polarimetry, we can characterize the character better because we are acquiring with the data in all polarizations. So based on the demand that EOS 4 was flown with the full polarimetric capabilities in all the imaging modes, right from the uh, like a strip map modes, cancer, we have a uh, full polarimetric mode in that. And also next uh, coming to the X-band constellation, as I said, they will have a very high resolution and use for the strategic applications. So we have a constellation of uh, X-band satellite indigenously developed. 
and also uh, before any system it is fly in the space bone so we have in our own to uh, like demonstrate the performance of the hardware and the data products so we'll have generally airborne campaigns the particular sensor will be flown and uh, it will be qualified and all the models and the data products will be developed and they will be calibrated in such case, before the reset, one is flown, we have a DMMSR, which is a disaster management SAR, which was the flown, but exclusively for the disaster support. And uh, we have an L and S band airborne data is also like a, a similar way. It is a precursor to the, our NSR. And of course, as I said, it is like our planetary missions. We have an L and S band uh, SAR. So like, uh, so ISRO is uh, giving so much of EVO data in optical, microwave, and the thermal and the multispectral. So uh, NRSC is having the uh, IMGOS complex, which we call is the integrated multi-mission for Earth observation satellite. So whatever the data is uh, like uh, sensors were developed with the ISRO, the data will be acquired at uh, our ground stations, which was uh, situated at Shadnagar. And also we have another ground station at the Maitri, Antarctica and Jodhpur in, in India. So all the three uh, work uh, like ground stations we are using to download our uh, data. So once the data is downloaded, all the data will be uh, transferred to our uh, uh, MJOS complex, which was situated at the Shadnagar NRSC. So the data will be like, uh, there will be processed because we have a uh, like uh, different uh, uh, work centers we can call. We have a data flow, like all the workflows will be in the automation right from the data ingest. Then it will go for the level zero processing where the station artifacts will be re uh, removed and the data will be prepared to give it to the uh, generating the next level of processing that is level one and level two. We have a data quality evaluation. So all the data will be sample basis. They will be evaluated and this uh, platform stability and all our sensor related health parameters every time regularly will monitor and all the feedbacks and the reports will have a flow in the system right to the project and uh, concern team. So we have a data product quality also is there. We have an auto quality as well as the manual QC. So wherever that product is going to the user, we will certify the product uh, aerometrically and geometrically and the format wise and we will disseminate to the users. So we have other than the standard products like uh, level one and level two, we have an evaluated products like Mosaic, Medjid. And so they depends upon the user request, we have a different evaluated services also. And all the data, as Madam said, the data, we have a Bunidi portal. So all the data will be disseminated through the Bunidi portal with respect to the users. So we have government users, industries, academic, international, and we are also part of international charter for the disaster support and all. So we have a very huge infrastructure of uh, storage and the network. So every day we have uh, almost 100 passes a day we are acquiring at our stations and also more than 2 TB per the data. So we are, we are archiving in our thing. So uh, apart from the regular, as I said, so we have a fast experience in the data processing of the uh, synthetic aperture radar data. So right from the SLAR, which was in the C-Van, uh, there is an airborne SAR, as I said, the disaster management SAR, VSAT-1, and we have an airborne mini SAR in the X-Van, and also the present airborne SAR of l &S, and this, whatever said, the X-Van translations, and the US for C-Van, and also we are gearing up for the future missions, which is an NSR, which I'm going to uh, uh, give the overview about that, and also resat one b which is in the C-Van, it is a follow-on mission of the US-04. So, and also we have in a collaborative missions, uh, which is uh, initially we have a ERS-1 and 2 also. We have our ground station. We used to acquire our Indian terrain of ERS-1 and 2 and used to disseminate. Uh, and also, as I said, the NOVAs are also we have in the collaborations. So, uh, like, uh, so we are like e-governance. We have a societal applications we are supporting and strategic applications and also the uh, natural resource management. Uh, because we have a uh, remote sensing applications, which by all our remote sensing uh, RRSCs, they will take care. And our the SAC application center, which is the one of the lead center of the ISRO, which designs the payload and uh, data product algorithm development and all. So the, all the ISRO teams will be are like performing and uh, developing the techniques to do the earth uh, dynamic study. So now, uh, just I'm going coming to the NSR. Uh, so this is NSR is a NASA in uh, like uh, ISRO synthetic aperture radar. It is a collaboration mission. It is once again, it is also of its first of its kind because of a unique mission, which is having the 
dual frequencies are uh, till now we don't have any dual frequency sars on board in any sars uh, uh, missions uh, this is the first one and it is with the sweep sat technique which is having the very large wide swept coverage with a uh, very high resolution and also with the interferometric and the polarimetric uh, capabilities this is very complex design uh, as well as because you know, two agents are uh, participating in that and also because of its high technical capabilities and also there are different uh, design challenges are also is there. So the main objective is NSR is uh, because to provide the data sets towards uh, like meeting the applications in solid earth and ecosystems, cryosphere and uh, as well as the disaster response. So the ISRO's ground segment is responsible for acquiring and processing and disseminating the data and we have to plug in into our existing uh, infrastructure. So uh, this is actually a glimpse of our L, L and S band air bouncer. As I said, uh, it was flown uh, because we have identified the targets which were uh, identified in the NSR missions. We have uh, some campaigns in the India and as well as the US. And it is all the data which was flown in the uh, US UAV star. It is available in the uh, website, uh, I think, which will be uh, given to our organizing committee. So all the people can uh, uh, go through that. You can access and download the data, which is available in SDF 5 and as well as the GeoTIF. So this is uh, for all application people. It will be easy that you can see the data in L and as well. So you can be ready with the uh, next uh, NSR because this was uh, we have released in this uh, actually opportunities also in the RS. I think we got so much of response from all the academic institutions and they are participating and regularly we have in workshops also to present their uh, algorithms and the models. And uh, uh, so, uh, because the thing is that uh, next, why we have chosen the L and S, S band? Because the L band is uh, because the main objective of the uh, NSR is to uh, study the uh, like uh, ecosystems, solid earth, like, basically those kind of things where L is having the good penetrating capabilities and it has the low temporal correlation and also the powerless penetration because of that L band is so. And S band because it is sensitive to the light vegetation because even though these two bands are uh, nearer to use it because of their different penetrating capabilities, we can use the, both the data L and S and we can uh, derive a good science of out of it. And also it is of the SIPSAR technique. So because here we are getting the 240 kilometers uh, swath within a very high resolution of the six meters. And we have a global data collection because we have the polarimetry because the data is available in single, dual, compact, and as well as the full, full pole. And because of this, we will do the surface characterization as well as the biomass uh, estimation. And because of its 12-day repetitivity, it is a very good uh, repetitivity where you can do the temporary analysis because of its uh, rapid sampling and also very high resolution of 3 to 10 meter with a more dependent, like because it has a different modes, which I'm going to explain in my next slide. And also uh, we have a uh, like uh, life cycle of the three years uh, you know, for, because we can do for the uh, time series analysis. So roughly you are getting 30 cycles of the data per year. Uh, so 90 cycles of the data where you can get the entire uh, like global coverage uh, with that many uh, samples. And we have a very good uh, orbit control and the uh, orbit maintenance also because the orbit is maintained in the diamond maintenance. So we'll get a very good the baseline. So you can do the uh, better interferometric, uh, differential interferometric applications also. And if you see that image, you can see that the reflector, which is a 12, 12 meter diameter. So you can see that that is uh, given because this I'm going to explain about the work share because the two parties are involved in this. The reflector, which are the red, it is showing by the ISRO because S band SAR is uh, developed uh, by ISRO. So, and the spacecraft is also developed by ISRO. So, the spacecraft S band antenna and as well as the S band electronics is by the ISRO and also launch vehicle is from the ISRO. So the antenna and uh, reflector antenna and L-band electronics and uh, uh, L-band antenna feed by the JPL and also the orbit maintenance and the GPS also is providing by the JPL. And it is the 6 a.m. 6 p.m. mission as a regular other uh, SAR missions generally will have. And uh, it is having the uh, like uh, uh, geometry of it is only the uh, uh, left, left clicking only because generally the SAR sensor will have both left and right here because they even the capability is having to see the both live left and right. So the left is a six to see the Antarctica uh, more coverage. 
and we have a uh, like uh, incidence angle range from 33 degrees to 47 degrees. So this uh, you can see that picture how it will be in the GSLV in the stout condition NSR. So it orbit is around 747 kilometers. So polar sun synchronous so that you can have a more global coverage and the repeat cycle of the 12 days. As I said, it is a 6 a.m. 6 p.m. The frequency of L and S band uh, and available in different uh, polarizations. Here we have a different range bandwidth ranging from 10 megahertz to 7 megahertz in the S band, whereas the 5 megahertz to 80 megahertz in the L band. So that we have a different uh, range resolution, even though the azimuth resolution is fixed around the six, meet, six meters. The swath is of the two, uh, 240 kilometers. This is an already I have explained about this one. So uh, why that uh, SIPSAR technique is governed to the NSR? Because we know that every SAR will have a different uh, imaging techniques. One is by the strip map and another is the scan sir. The strip map mode is uh, directly on the single beam operations. Along track the data, the beam will be steep with the fixed spot. Uh, as per the uh, like fixed, how much imaging information is fixed, that much the electron it will go. So you cannot cover uh, more SAT will not be covered. So the repetitivity will be more. Like suppose for example, when you calculate for the NSR, it is coming around the 40 day to cover that 240 kilometers. So it will not meet our de deformation and the ice sheet uh, requirements. And another uh, uh, imaging mode is the cancer, where uh, the imaging mode will be operating by the different beams to cover the uh, intended SWAT. For example, if you see the US 4, we have a scanser imaging of MRS and uh, CRS. Respectively, <laughs> 20 kilometers respectively. In this FIPSAR technique, actually, we have an active uh, phased array antenna. The feed will have a different transmit and receive modules, TR modules. During the transmit, all the transmit modules will be on so that it illuminating the entire swath of the 240 kilometers. While receiving each 10 kilometer beam will be uh, like uh, acquired independently, they will be processed and the stitched to get the 240 kilometers. During the process, the beam will be scanned entire through reflector. That's why it's naming as the uh, steep star technique. So as I said that NSR will give the potential acquisition uh, applications in the ecosystems, uh, like in the crop biomass, crop monitoring, forest biomass, example to that one. In the solid earth deformations, so we can go for the landslides deformation, uh, like volcanic uh, deformations, uh, earthquake studies, and interspecific and the course specific studies like that. In cryosphere, for the polar ice and other uh, glacier uh, dynamics uh, and etc. And coastal inversion, we have a different uh, like uh, sea level rise and the coastal bathymetry and the ocean currents and etc. we can carry out. And the disaster response, we have a flex, forest fires and other oil spill and earthquakes and all it is coming under the disaster response. And then geological applications also we can carry out with this one. Actually, the NSR is a reference mission. So initially itself is the what is its life uh, uh, time of uh, three years and what are the targets to be observed. So because we have a science team comprising of the application team from uh, ISRO as well as the JPL. So all the uh, scientists together with their experience, they've already uh, defined the targets uh, to be uh, acquired and which configuration it is. So we have in place the reference observation plan as per the NSR acquisitions will be planned. So the data will be acquired in whether in uh, standalone S band mode and the uh, standalone L band only. And we have a joint acquisition of L band L and S. That means L and S sensors will be switched on at a time simultaneously. You can image the target so that you can observe the what are the observations in the both L and uh, S band uh, thing. So uh, based on the range bandwidth, whatever I was told in the last uh, this thing, the configurations are uh, fixed for the different themes, uh, like in the dual mode or a single mode or in the CP and the uh, full polar metric modes. And if you see the total NSR coverage, including the ISRO and as well as the 
and NASA interest. You see that all the themes, the different themes, uh, so much of data globally, it is available. And this data is already, it is available with the free. So the, you should be happy that all the community that you have a polarimetric and interferometric data of uh, so much volume of the data you are getting uh, uh, in the NSR. So S-band requirement of 8 terabits per the day, almost 1 TB of uh, volume. It is downloading per day for the ISRO requirements and almost the 42 terabits of the data you are getting to the ground from the uh, global uh, ac uh, data acquired in the L-band. So, so much of data is available uh, for the users, the free, so that you can uh, go uh, like uh, derive so many applications using out of it. And this is the calendar. As I said, it is already in the plan from January to December for one year. So, what are the themes in the right say like background land ocean amazon because the calval is also important for the uh, calibrating the product have the coastal antarctica and the greenland so the whatever i have put is an isro's request which was going to be acquired in l pluses l and s so the coming to the data processing scenario uh, because the uh, the data is downloaded because it is a very huge volume of the data data going to be downlink in the k band so our station should be having the capability of uh, downlinking the data, which is acquiring the KM band. Of course, we have already experience with our Cartoset data. It is already ground station has been uh, established in that project. Uh, so that the KM band will be used for the downlinking our data. So in this scenario, nominally, all the S band, which is of ISRO interest, will be downlinked at our ISRO stations. That is at Shadnagar and uh, uh, and Antarctica, whereas the JPL has its own uh, earth stations that is like Alaska, Svalbard, Walks, and uh, Punta Arenas that is at the Chile. So, all their L band requirement will be downloaded at that uh, NASA ground stations. As I said, ISRO is, is also having the L band data of ISRO interest. So, we will pull the data from L band which were acquired at their JPL station to our IMGOs for the processing. So the immediate processing after downlinking, so we should have a uh, pre-processing software should be there to prepare for the generating the level one and level two products. So because L-band is from the JPL, they are providing to our the processor, which we'll call it as a level zero pre-processor. Using that output, our ISRO is generating, uh, like developing a software for generating the L-band data products also. And anyhow, uh, ISRO is having the heritage of uh, generating the data product from our S-band sensor. So, because 80% uh, of our ISRO request is in the joint mode, that is in the L plus S mode. So, we are going to give a bundle product in the L and S. So, in uh, so that will be generated by the ISRO, which is going to be uh, designated through our uh, Bhunidhi portal. So, as I said that, like the time juice, any uh, earth data, like EVO data sensor is launching and acquiring the data at the, like Shadnagar, so that data will be plugged into the IMGO. So we are making a necessary workflow automation and other uh, upgradations of the storage and the infrastructure in the IMGOs to plug in the NSR data processing into our chain. So these are the standard products from uh, NSR. So that is, uh, as you know, that level zero B is a raw product that is also free. Level zero E is at the before that level, which is not for the users. And we have in a single look complex data, which was in the radar co coordinates. And we have an interferogram and un unwrapped interferogram and uh, RF products, which are of the uh, level one products. But interferogram and RF products only for our, uh, uh, like Greenland and uh, Antarctica regions only. But uh, in unwrapped interferogram for all the, uh, all our Indian interest land uh, mass. Uh, because uh, and uh, because we are divided into polarimetric and interferometric products. What I said is L1 is of uh, interferometric products. Then we're coming to the L2. We have a geographic product that is a GCOW, that is a covariant product, which is for the polarimetric product and GSLCL. At least I think yesterday uh, here we had a very good uh, discussion or a session on the polarimetric. So there he mentioned about the covariance uh, matrix and all. So we are providing in the geo coordinate coordinates that covariance product also using that the user can uh, derive their own uh, decomposition products and also the uh, gslc the uh, single look complex in the geo coded uh, coordinates we are giving so as i said the undrapped which we are giving in the radar coordinates also we giving in the uh, geographic coordinates 
and uh, job products these are the offset products between the master and the slave so what are the difference between the, the master and slave when you are doing the registering that is like a one product we are giving so that we can be used in during the uh, portion of antarctica on the greenland and so as i said this all products are open data policy we have so all the products are free they are in the hdf format and once the data is processed from that within one to two hours we are going to disseminate the products in the uh, bhunidhi so in this actually one more uh, important thing is other than nominal processing we have an urgent response also for uh, uh, supporting the disaster response uh, so then we in this uh, project we are calling it is an urgent response so but satellite will not change it because it is already it is a reference observation plan is already planned satellite will not uh, change its configuration but it is one way suppose if the data event is happened the data will be captured so that we will give it in within uh, six hours that nrt and the urgent response data will be available to the respective users and also here the data products the orbit is very important for uh, uh, getting the location accuracy or the geometric accuracy so here we have a different uh, orbit parameters we'll call it as a uh, medium orbit ephemeris and the precise orbit ephemeris and near orbit ephemeris all over uh, because uh, these data products uh, as i said there is a team is there science team like comprises of both the uh, isro and nasa team we have an algorithm development team and uh, both are in synergy and we have uh, so many meetings and the interfaces to finalize the data of products and their format so that because any user if they download the data products from their site or our site it should be in the synergy so all the things were taken care and are mostly all the data product harmonization is in the place so any uh, because the algorithm may be different but the output will be more or less it is same in the harmonizing form so uh, we have uh, like uh, it is a draft version of the standard product uh, specifications as of now we have so the geometric product uh, accuracy will be around for 20 meter for l band and s band it is 10 meter and the radiometric accuracy is plus or minus 1.5 db for the l band and also the s band and the pslr it is uh, around minus 13 db and uh, we as i said that the sand range resolution is of 1.2 pixels and the phase accuracy is plus or minus 15 degrees so uh, while doing the registration we have a sub pixel resolution uh, registration which is very much important to calculate the interferometric applications and apart from the standard products we have a level 3 and uh, level 4 uh, data products so the level 3 is the large area india mosaic so we have a complete because india is covering in the dual pole systematic coverage we have so many cycles of the data we are providing the mosaic uh, which is uh, radiometrically terrain corrected products that is we'll call it as a level 3 and level 4 products are the science products based on the uh, themes so we have as i said we have an ecosystems uh, so ecosystem for example we have a forest cover and the forest disturbance map crop area crop types land inundation like that and in cryospheres we have a glacial spaces and uh, antarctic ice velocity and solid earth, we have a line of sight deformation and also time series deformation maps. And coastal coastal, uh, this uh, ocean surface has been coastal bath petri and mangrove types cover. So there are somewhere of daily basis or a seasonal base or a six months or a one year based on the information product we are going to generate and we will host in the Bhunidhi for the uh, dissemination. And uh, so once the data product is generated, it should be radiometrically and geometrically calibrated and before the dissemination or operationalization of the data. So uh, we have a team of uh, NSR CalVal team, which comprises all the ISRO centers and uh, we'll have uh, into the commissioning phase. After launch, we have a 90 days of commissioning phase where the data calibration and the validation will be happened. For this, we have a pan India because we all our uh, things, uh, I can tell that calibration will be done by using the point target. Uh, like yesterday, they have told about the corner reflectors are using the distributed targets. Generally, all the Amazon Congo, which is having the international uh, calibration sites, the people will be used for the calibrating the SAR data. So we have in the Span India, CalSets is already established and uh, we have done already exercises for the EOS4 and uh, NovaSAR. Uh, so, and also the airborne campings, uh, so all the product algorithms and the validation algorithms are in place. And apart from that, uh, globally, we have a CalVal site we have, because we have in collaboration with the NASA also. 
So the team totally will calibrate the all and as the L and S band, both radiometrically and geometrically uh, in the commissioning phase and also in the science phase. Apart from this point target and distributor target, uh, like theme wise, because we, as I said, we have a different themes in the NISR. So we have each theme also like agriculture, science and theme wise, the uh, science targets are also is defined, they are in place. So the data products will be validated, whatever the information products coming in the level four will be validated using those sites in the science phase and as well as in the commissioning phase. So, Madam has already explained about the Bhunidhi. So, NSR data is also going to be disseminated to the Bhunidhi. Uh, so, here we have a destination like a direct download. We have HTTPS batch download and also the API based download. And also, we have an on demand uh, processing. So, as Madam said, the, we have a data and uh, infrastructure as a service. So, so we, which we are going to be upgraded in a few months, uh, so before NSR launch. So during the NSR, once the operationalization, you will have a, uh, like uh, you can register into the Bhunidhi, you can use our cloud for uh, generating your tools, or uh, you can use the existing tools, whatever is available in the Jupyter More Notebooks in the Bhunidhi platform. So people can, without downloading the data, you can uh, do your analysis at our end, and uh, directly output can be downloaded at your end. So I want to just tell about the NASA side also. NASA is the products will be generated for the L band uh, from their uh, science data system and the data will be uh, distributed through the their AS of that. This is the data archival, active archival center of the in NASA, which is their central archive. So you can uh, access the DAC also for the downloading the data, L band data. However, the, both the parties will have a data access uh, mechanism to access their portals and sharing of the data for uh, organization. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for the nice talks, uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Osha Sundari and Ms. Uh, Manju Sharma. We'd now like to present you with some mementos. So, um, 